Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Brandy Gilmore. She's an author and a public speaker who is helping to educate folks on how their own bodies can be their own cure, especially when it comes to chronic illness and pain. After an unexpected event, Brandy found herself disabled and desperately searching for answers. In fact, she ended up going from being bedridden to a wheelchair to a walker to walking. And now she's helping folks understand how their mind and energy can help them to relieve pain and work with chronic illness. So... I'm excited to introduce you to Brandy. We talk a lot about emotions. We talk a lot about how different things in our life can be reframed to help us to relieve pain. But we're also talking about something really cool, how she is using medical thermal imaging to show how she is in real time helping folks relieve their pain. So if you've ever seen thermal imaging, such as heat in the body, She is showing how that reduces while she works with folks to work on their thought process and use their mind to help relieve pain and inflammation in the body. Very cool stuff. And especially if you're like, "Mm, I don't know, this stuff's kind of woo, check this podcast out. And if you have access to YouTube, you can see the video showing inflammation and then reduced inflammation after she works with someone. Really cool stuff. Let's introduce you to Brandy Gilmore. Hey, Health Junkies. I have Brandy Gilmore on today, and I'm excited to talk about how you can heal yourself. It's a topic that we're starting to get more traction on. Back in the day when, you know, I was talking to folks about it, I'd get that deer in the headlights look. But Brandy has some technology that can show you really what's happening in real time. So, so cool. We're going to get into that. So, Brandy, welcome to the Health Fix Podcast. Thank you, Janine. It's so wonderful to be here. And I love that you said that the deer in the headlights look, I absolutely (laughs) get it. After literally after I healed myself, I thought people are going to think this is impossible or how is this, does this even work? And so I love that you said that. It's, it's a common look that I get even nowadays. I do acupuncture. I do a lot of, you know, coaching folks on healing themselves, mantras, tapping, you know, you name it. And a lot of times when people are like, they're like, hmm. I'm going, what are you thinking right now? Tell me what you're thinking because there's always <laughs> that look. <laughs> you know, that is, that was, it's so funny that that was exactly what I figured that, you know, just I would experience. I thought, okay, so after I healed myself, I thought, you know, from wheelchair, walker, cane, being an absolute mess, I thought people are going to think this is impossible. I mean, I was a train wreck and I would have thought this is ridiculous. I would have never thought, that it was possible to, to heal with my mind. In fact, if somebody told me I could heal my, with my mind, I probably would have been offended. <laughs> like, you think my problem is all in my head? <laughs> so, right. And it's, and as a doc, like, it, it is that slippery slope where you're like, I really think this could benefit you. I don't want you to think, I feel like I dance around sometimes. I'm like, I don't want you to think that I think it's all in your head because. I mean, it is in a way, but I'm not saying, you know, it's like, oh, <laughs> this is how I describe it, though, is actually and and it's not all in the head. So the things that I've seen are on very physical levels. But the way I describe it, kind of just a, an analogy is to think about an emotional stroke. You know, if you think about a stroke, somebody can have a stroke in their brain and it can paralyze their body. So we can see there's a brain body connection. And so. When we start to look at it, anything that does happen in our brain can very much affect our physical body. And so, you know, if you have a right brain stroke, it can affect the left side, left side, the left brain stroke can affect the right side. And so I started thinking about, okay, well, what if this is like an emotional stroke, if you will, like emotions impacting the the brain that are then in turn affecting the corresponding part of the body. And, you know, something that was interesting, even in that research and not to get too technical, but You know, if you think about the homunculus map where, you know, neuroscientists were able to brilliant, brilliant data where they were able to stimulate different parts of the brain and then notice where it showed up in the body. So they could stimulate like the insular cortex and then it would make somebody feel like they're going to vomit. And so it's so different parts of the brain do impact different parts of the body. And so and, and 
Also, when we look at emotions, research has shown that emotions can make a very physical impact even on the brain. You know, um, things like PTSD or stress from a car accident can even actually change the sh shape of the brain. So anyways, but, but point being is just our emotions can create a, a, and mindset can create a very real impact on our physical body. It's so incredible. You know, at first, I, I grew up in the Midwest. I always I sound like probably a, a broken record to my podcast listeners, but I grew up in the Midwest. You know, it's one of those things where like, you know, even even becoming an acupuncturist was was a stretch, right? And so thinking like, okay, my emotions can get stored in my body. They can create different things. It's crazy. But yet at the same time, we're all like, do you have stomach, you know, butterflies in your stomach? Are you nervous? And it's like, we get that. Why can't we? Why can't we go to the next level? Exactly. And so uh, a few things. So when I got better, I thought, okay, I have to show this under medical equipment. That was yes. like, that was my uh, goal was I, I said, you know, I just have to show people so it works. And, and technically what I did is after I healed, I thought, you know, let me show people. And the first thing that came to mind was showing people how to release pain. Yeah. And so I would show them how to use their mind and they would be able to release their pain. And it was incredible. And there was this one time when I was um, on stage and normally on stage, I'd take, you know, volunteers from the audience and show them how to use their mind to release their pain. And as I was getting off stage one time, I thought, you know, one of these times somebody's going to say that person was fake. They didn't really have neck pain or back pain or whatever. And that would have been me previously because I would have thought, yep. this is impossible. And so that's what really drove me to start even figuring out how to do it under medical equipment to show that it's not mind over matter. It's not pretending like there are real physiological changes taking place. And I think that is genius because this is where I've been able to really have a talking point to folks to be like, look, there's this, you know, Joe Dispenza has got his functional MRIs. You know, we've got lots of different things to show folks. What, you know, I, I see that you have a background as a network engineer. So I'm guessing you were thinking technology right out the gates. Like, what could I do? What could I do? Who turned you on to medical thermal in imaging? Or did you find it yourself? What, what brought you to it? You know, actually, when I started, when, after I got better, I started actually working with this chiropractor and, um, and I was helping people in his office and whatnot. And at the end of me getting better, when I was, were, basically, I had a scan taken of my back. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you could, I mean, the whole thing was like red and white. It was, <laughs> it was, it was a mess. It was, oh, and so, and that was, you know, um, gosh, I mean, my injury was 21 years ago now. So, I mean, it was so, but I had that done and I didn't even think about it again until years later when I said, you know what, I wonder if this would work because I didn't know. And part of the reason I didn't know if it would work is that medical thermal imaging, what it does is it checks the heat of the mm -hmm. body. And a simple way to think about that is, you know, if somebody has a sprained ankle or an infection, you know, it generates heat, as you know, and medical thermal imaging is able to detect this heat. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't know at the time is, okay, well, if I show somebody how to release their pain, how soon is that going to affect the heat temperatures of the body? Like, is it going to be like a one hour response time to, okay, well, their pain is gone. Delay, 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 delay. Oh, look, now you can see it on the scan because I didn't want that. I wanted real time results because, you know, when you think about it, let's say neck pain, somebody can always say, well, I turned wrong or I worked out or, you know, and, and so I, I wanted real time results. And so that's, and, and so basically what I did was this, is I reached out to Dr. Hillary Smith who's advanced medical thermography and basically asked her to start scanning people uh -huh. while I worked with them using the mind. And what was brilliant is that she set the thermal imaging camera up to take a new image every one second. Oh, so wow. Automatic, right? Every one second. So it was just, and then what would happen is then I work with people and you could literally see as their pain went down, it also changed. Now, what was also great is that if I then mentioned and went the, had them go back into the negative mindset, then the pain would come back up and you could see it instantaneously. And while obviously pain not coming up as 
is great. The wonderful thing is you can see it's not placebo analgesia. You can see it's not just mind over matter. Like it's in real time. They don't, none of this was even told to them. And, uh, and so that, that's, what's fun as you can see it. Ah, I love that. I love that. And, you know, having, you know, being a doc that looks at a lot of breast thermography, you know, there is an image where we can see their neck. And so I see, you know, how many people have inflammation in general in their back or along their spine. And so when I saw that you were doing that, I was like, oh, wow, how cool, how cool to be able to be like, look, you've got this on your thermography. Let's move you over to see Brandy and see if we can get rid of that pain that you've been having for <laughs> forever. So can I, you know, and actually, by the way, I don't know if I can do a share screen, but if so, I can show yeah. you what this looks like. I think so. Let's see if you oh, have actually I can. Right okay, here. perfect. All right. Does that work? All yes. Right. Let's do it. Here we go. So let's do it. So this is actually, I'm just going to grab a medical. I had, I got these published in a medical journal, a few case studies last year. And um, okay. So if we go grab this right here and basically what these are. So I mentioned, you know, the heat and we'll see, let's see, it takes a second just for the images to show up sometimes. There we go. All right. So this is an image of a woman. This is 22 minutes apart and uh, she had a 5.5 level of pain. And as you can see, this is all of the, the pain, the inflammation, and this is 22 minutes later. And so, and, and I do want to emphasize, I make this look really, really, really easy. Now this one is 47 minutes and um, this one's, th this one is fun because What's fun about this is that this gentleman, after I worked with him and it was 28 minutes and his pain went from a six to a zero. And after I worked with him, he, he said, wow, I'm surprised that that worked. I just came from a motivational seminar and a 10 day meditation retreat. Holy cow. Holy cow. <laughs> so, which was great. I didn't know going into that, that he had just done that, but it, so it's specific things in the mind. And I always, always want to emphasize, I make this look ridiculously easy. And so it does take an understanding of the mind. And, and of course, we can unpack that even more. But um, but I just want to emphasize the average person isn't probably going to be able to release their own pain in 28 minutes or 20 like, until you know how to do it. Once That's what's exciting. Sure. This is what I love. Absolutely. People do after they heal themselves, they go, oh my gosh, I just released my headaches or I just got rid of my pain or it, it becomes a thing that you start to learn. It's a skill. So, so, um, but yeah. I, I think it's awesome. It's, you know, this day and age, having these skills where we can turn to ourself and not have to get medication, not have to go, you know, I'm not saying don't see doctors, but I'm saying that so you don't have to figure out how to get to the ER at three in the morning when pain sets in, you can neutralize it yourself. I mean, this is, this is huge. So of course, folks are going to be like, Brandy, what are you doing? What are you teaching people? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> right? Of course, we'll and talk by... about your book too, but let's, yeah, give us a scoop. Absolutely. And by the, by the way, what I always tell people to do is I always say, don't avoid your doctors, blow your doctor's mind with what you're capable of with your mind. And that's kind of like the, the theme because, you know, it's it just, uh, we want, we want to be responsible with it. And it's also, um, just incredible. And, and, uh, I, I even, I had a woman that I worked with who had a tumor in her throat and she was scheduled for surgery the next day. And she had just had a pre-op MRI. They measured the tumor again. It was five millimeters. You could see it protruding. And so they had measured it or, you know, scanned it several times. The day before the surgery, her and I worked. And after we did, it disappeared. And she showed up for, she, so she didn't avoid her doctor. She still showed up, showed up for surgery the next day. And her ENT was like, I've never seen this, anything like this in my 30 years of, <laughs> of practice. And um, this is incredible. And so point, just point, just always see your doctors blow their mind um, with what you're capable of. And so just, yeah. <laughs> Love that. I, I want people to do that for me. Like come, come in and blow my mind. I, I want to see this. <laughs> Guys, let's do this. Let's do this. So tell us, like, what are you up to? What what kind of things are you teaching folks? How do you get started? Give us give us kind of a, a good idea, a good look into what you're up to. Absolutely. So ultimately, what I would love is that every single person feels empowered to be able to understand their mind-body connection and heal themselves. You know, when you stop and think about it, 
it's been written throughout history in every spiritual practice, pretty much in one way or another. I mean, it's even in the Bible where it says a merry heart is a medicine to the body. Ill thoughts will dry the bones. Um, stress affects the body and placebo, nocebo. I mean, we can see it in so many ways, how the mind impacts the body. And so, um, and so what I'm up to is that's, that's ultimately uh, what, what I would love is everybody to be able to do that themselves. Um, and basically to, to start what a person would do is, is, um, ultimately I think the first thing is really understanding that we can. Yeah. Yeah. And believing, because I think there is a level of believing that you have the power. If someone's not in, in belief, I, I kind of wondered, have you noticed like you can, you can get some results, even if someone's not a hundred percent bought in? Actually, my thing has always been where I take somebody who is skeptical and I said, okay, let's do it. <laughs> and <laughs> nice. That's, that's been mine. Uh, Cause I like to show people, I love to blow people's mind. And, and so uh, this is what I would say is a few things is, you know, if somebody has panic attacks, you know, if they are having anxiety and they start having panic attacks, that's going to happen whether they believe it or not. Mm -hmm. That can happen. Um, another way to look at it is, you know, as I was researching and trying to figure out how the mind affected the physical body, there were a few really key insights that were pivotal. One was that people with multiple personality disorder can have different ailments when they're in different personalities. They can have high blood pressure in one and regular in another. They can have asthma, allergies. They can be extremely allergic to something in one personality and not in another. There's even a well-known case of a woman who was blind, medically blind in some personalities, but not in others. Wow. And uh, yeah, and, in that, and things like body temperature, heart rate, all of these things that you wouldn't think, oh, well, I'm going to change my body temperature. <laughs> I'm going to change my heart. Like, and so, um, you know, and so, or asthma, or allergy, all of the, and they happen, they can happen instantly when some, when, when a person shifts. And that was something that was really eye-opening to me. <laughs> Another thing that was really eye-opening is I initially thought when I started researching mind-body healing, I thought of the placebo. And mm -hmm. a lot of people would say, well, it works because of belief. He has a belief it's going to work. Hey, hey. And so I like forced myself to believe I was already healed for a, a long time, like well over a year, if not longer, you know, I lost track of time during my whole injury, but I, I was forcing myself and affirmations and chanting. And I mean, all these things that I would have never done previously, but I was doing it. I was, I was, I was all in and it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And so as I started researching, I eventually came across something called the open label placebo. And it is exactly like it sounds, open label. Both the doctor and the patient both know it's a fake pill and it can still work. Hmm. So, so wow. then I started realizing, well, hey, this isn't all about belief. <laughs> so, but I, but I would say that, of course, the more we understand how to use it, uh, the more we can implement it. And by the way, another kind of factor that we can look at when it comes to belief is this. I know me during my injury, I could have really good days, like better days, and I could have really bad days. Mm -hmm. uh, that didn't happen because I believe that was before I even started looking at the mind. I know people with all kinds of illnesses, rheumatoid arthritis or, you know, uh, autoimmune conditions, pain broken leg, this, that, the other, you can have good days, you can have flare ups, you have bad days. And so it's not because you believe it's going to happen. It just, you wake up and that's how you're feeling or off. And so as we can see with the same physical issue, we can have a lot of different changes going on. So I would say, again, just pointing to the awareness that there's a lot more than, than belief that, um, and belief is a good thing in that when we do believe we can do something, the, and we we know we can, then we'll we'll put more effort towards doing it. And I think that's, of course, pivotal. Sure, sure. I think, you know, we we kind of get a fuel in the fire, right? Once we see a little progress, we see a little more progress. Now it's like, okay, okay, you know, what more can I do? I'm sure you experienced that along the way when you're like, wow, okay, I'm feeling better. Oh, I can do, oh. And you just kind of had a drive, I'm guessing, to just keep going, going, going more. You no, know, it was a little tricky. 
it was because I had been doing so. So yes, absolutely. And I got into several years of meditating and like binaural beats and frequencies and hypnosis states and all of these things. And I could get my pain down at times, sometimes, but not always, Mm -hmm. but it didn't work to heal my body. And I had like this, this other pivotal uh, moment where, you know, because I had, I was laying like in this deep state of relaxation, relaxation and theta state and delta state and doing all these things. But I had this pivotal moment where a friend called me up because her aunt was passing and she asked me if I wanted to say, you know, goodbye. And of course I did. So she picked me up and we went over there. And as I was saying goodbye to this woman who I just loved and adored, um, I also had an epiphany. I mean, she had been in hospice in and out of consciousness for several months. And I thought, gosh, this is probably what I look like. I mean, mm. I was in this deep state of relax and I, relaxation. And I thought, well, if this is supposed to be so healing, then why isn't she healing? Yeah. And yeah. And that was... So I would say that was the next jarring because I was, I was chasing. That's why when, when meditation or relaxation started to decrease my pain a little bit, I was like, all right, 20 hours a day, let's bring it. (laughs) I'm doing Mm -hmm. this. Yeah. I mean, you don't need, like when I was sleeping, I mean, and I didn't sleep much because I was in a lot of pain, but there was a recording literally going at any point and every point of the day. Wow. Uh, Yeah. Wow. Huh. Very, fa- I mean, you, you've got my wheels turning because I mean, it is fascinating that, that you know, pre death, we do go in and out of different brainwave states. And it's like, huh, something, something to chew on definitely there. Something for probably everybody to be like, oh, that is interesting. So, all right, tell us the next step. What, what did you do next? Like, how did you start working on the pain a little bit more intensively? Absolutely. So, what I did is I said, okay, I need to simplify this and I need to understand it. And I said, okay. How can I see that the mind affects the physical body emotions? And I said, okay. And then I was looking at, okay, well, if somebody's embarrassed, their face turns red. We know that emojis know that it's pretty solid. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Anxiety, panic attack. Okay. We can see that sexual thought, sexual, physical response, different for men and women. There's a response. Mm -hmm. We can see that. And So I thought, well, yeah, I'm going to need a lot more than emotions to heal my body. But then I started looking at things like broken heart syndrome, where somebody can die of a broken heart or even uh, scared to death. Somebody can be so scared, their heart stops. And interestingly, even current research from Harvard suggests that, that autoimmune conditions may be caused by stress. And so there's, you know, there's all of this research. And and so one thing that I noted from this was that different emotions affect the body differently. You know, Mm -hmm. embarrassment is different than panic panic attack is different than sexual thoughts. So I thought, okay, well, what about all the rest of the emotions that we don't see? What about hurt or anger or abandonment or rejection or, you know, what are they doing? And interestingly, by the way, Last year, the Surgeon General even released a statement regarding loneliness and how it can increase illnesses Mm -hmm. like type 2 diabetes and heart disease, all of these things. And so we see the connections everywhere, but what are we going to do about it? And so that's what I started looking at. Now, another thing that was really pivotal was this, as you know, I was good at troubleshooting and I can always look at everything objectively. And I said, well, wait a sec. Aren't there plenty of people who are really stressed, PTSD, trauma, who aren't sick? How does Mm -hmm. that happen? And Mm -hmm. people with seemingly less stress are sick. That doesn't make sense. And what I began to put together, it was that it takes a certain combination of emotions. And that is the key. And a simple way to think about it is, you know, if somebody wants to bake a cake and they have flour, you can't bake a cake. You add other ingredients. (laughs) Now you can. Of course, illness is not cake. But the point is certain ingredients. And if you mix up the ingredients, different ingredients, different recipe. And so that as I started looking at things like multiple personality disorder, I could see 
how it would be possible for one person, one personality to have one illness and a different personality to have a completely different illness and another one to be healthy and have no documented illnesses. And so that's, that's how I started to look at it. Wow. So kind of like the recipe for illness is, is more or less what you're getting at there and putting the right kind of emotions mixed in to get. Exactly. Exactly. And kind of to give you one, one of the, probably the easiest is, well, if we look at for a moment, uh, one is what I call the symptom emotion. And that is the emotion that's connected to the symptom. So simply if somebody's embarrassed and their face turns red, that there's that direct correlation. Now, another ingredient, if you will, is if a person gets in into their identity that they're sick, then their body may not want to heal. And so, you know, somebody has been sick for a long period of time. Now they identify as being a sick person. And, and maybe what happens is either they have one illness after another, or they just, they can't heal it. It's just part of who they are. And so there's just different factors. I call them different factors in the brain of different categories of emotions. Some others that can be more obvious um, is if we have extreme fear. So if we mix fear with also other things as well, like the symptom emotion, and we can start to create that or, or another one, uh, lack of love, you know, so if we're lacking love, that can, so there's, so these, all of these things, but uh, so that's a key component as well. And so it, it gets a little complex because the line can get miswired. Um, and I can unpack that if you'd like, but I don't want, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to make it too complex for everybody. <laughs> sure, sure. No, I, I think I think we're I'm following you for sure. And I think at this point, you know, ultimately what we can think is like everybody's got a little different flavor onto their recipe of sorts in terms of yeah, what they like bring. A, yes. And so there's and there's certain yeah categories and whatnot. And then I would say um, as far as miswired, that is also a key component. And a simple way to to look at that is like this. Is that. You know, some people may have a feeling of pride in hardship. Mm -hmm. What happens is they may want to let go of the hardship, but the pride, it's connected to pride and people like to hold on to feelings of pride. Or even mm -hmm. another thing might be a person can get love and sympathy linked up where they feel love connected to sympathy. And so that can create and create a problem as well. So there's different ways that people can get miswired emotions in the subconscious mind that can also impact the health. So it's like, a, it's a combination, <laughs> but that's what I do when I said that under these thermal images, when I said, I make it look really easy, as you can see, there are specifics. So that's, so I'm always, when I work with somebody to have them get rapid results, I'm always identifying specific things. What is the specific emotion that's like, what are the specific emotions that are affecting them? How is it miswired? What do I need to change, et cetera, et cetera. So, so, um, so that's, what's key. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I'm guessing in your new book, master your mind and energy to heal your body. You're talking about that too, and giving a little more detail so we can give folks a little teaser into the book. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good. So, but this this is what excites me is you know we used to think that you know the four minute mile we used to think that it was impossible for a human being to run a mile in under four minutes mm -hmm. and then in the 1950s a man named roger bannister did that and after he did that it became a new norm a bunch of people did it and and it would it became a new standard and so we can see belief is part of it. People believing they can. Now, the other part is, of course, skill and, and being able to do it. Because if you said, hey, Brandy, go run a four minute mile, I could not do that right now I, unless I practiced and understood how and, and got the mechanics and, and all of that. Then that would be a different story. But that's the point that I see is I see people that are healing themselves from things and they go, oh, my gosh, we can do this. And it's that's what's exciting is just um, is becoming aware that we can do this. And, you know, we, we see this research all around us that stress affects the body and negativity and hurt and, you know, and loneliness and, and but we can undo it. Yes. And so it sounds like what you're doing when you work with folks is you're helping them identify what, what the issue is in terms of the emotion and the recipe of their emotion. And then you go to work on releasing the emotion 
to release the pain? Is that how it works? Is that the next steps? Or give me a scoop on your, your process a little bit. Absolutely. So typically my, my goal is really to empower people. So I don't typically work with a lot of people. Usually they go through a course or a class or a book or, Mm -hmm. um, but basically very simply, I call the, the overview of the process, the gift method. Okay. And step G is about first get new positive mind programming. And that's important to create new positive mind programming. And part of the reason that's so important as a first step is because when a lot of times people hear about this type of healing with the mind, the first thing they want to say is, what is the negative emotion? What are the negative Mm -hmm. things? And of course, if it's creating pain or illness in your body, you don't want to delve right into it. You'd rather actually lift first. Uh, So that's step one, lift and get and build new neural pathways. So uh, step G, and then I identify the specifics. So what specific problems, um, you know, what specific um, factors in the mind. Uh, Step F is to start freeing yourself from them. And so freeing is about release techniques and also about reprogramming the mind. And Mm. then step T is about stepping into the transformation. And so a lot of times people may want to think in a different way, but to get real results, we have to genuinely embody the transformation, the change. Makes sense. Makes sense. We're changing identities of sorts in, in this case. To happy, healthy, beautiful. Yep. <laughs> getting, getting a self-image that feels good and loving. Because that's the thing is, is that as people f- love their self-image and feel good about them, their self-image, that also helps bring in natural feelings of self-love. And and so there's there's key pieces um, that are important. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So raising raising the energetic vibe there as well. Now incorporating the gift, you know, like you're talking about gift, this is, I'm guessing you're talking about this in your book. Yeah. And, and book is meant like, how, how do you envision folks using the book? How would they sit down with the book? How would they consume it? How, you know, what's your vision for it? How does it work? How does it work? Well, this is what's really cool. So the book part one is basically the research that I found and how it makes like, and everybody's even just as they read it, they go, Oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. And so that's what I love. Also, it talks about energy of the body and how it's not just a woo woo concept that it is actually in top hospitals and research. It's top research hospitals are actually analyzing energy of the body. And, and so, uh, so it shares that as well, that it is hidden research and it is there uh, more than people realize. And, um, and then also talks about emotions and how our mindset can affect our energy, et cetera. And so there's that. And then part two is that step-by-step process of the gift method that takes people through understanding emotions and how to use them and how to shift them. And, you know, when we stop and look at it, our culture really does not understand emotions and mindset. You know, we have so many people that are struggling with depression or negativity or, or you know, just wounding. And, mm-hmm. and there, there's so many, um, there's tricks to it. There's, there's tricks to it that when you really understand emotions, they're all, they work a lot different than most people realize. And so when we start to understand how they work, it makes it makes it easier to be happy to create these changes. And so part of, you know, and what I do with working with people it, under medical equipment is part of it is identifying the issue. The other part is understanding emotions in a completely different way. I think that's a, a hanging up point for a lot of people about the emotions, because, yeah, we really don't. You know, one, we're kind of taught in a lot of cases to stuff them down, right, or not talk about them, you know, and and so trying to figure them out and really figure what are their purpose. It, I find that that's a sticking point for a lot of folks. How long did it take you to really explore the emotions and and start to see their purpose? I mean, I would say. <laughs> I mean, that's an interesting question. And the reason that is, is because, so I healed, I was completely healed by 2010. Okay. So at this point I've been healed down for 14 years. And I would say that healing myself was one thing. And then understanding all of the different ways that emotions work was then another thing. And 
because I mean, obviously I don't have all the negative emotion. I didn't have all the negative emotions in the world sure, sure. and, and understanding it because everybody's mindset is different. And then, so you start to find common patterns and threads and, and, and things that don't even, that seem so counterintuitive. And I mean, to give an example, one is this, is that let's say somebody is ha constantly having fearful thoughts. They're constantly having fearful thoughts. And a lot of times in our culture, we'd say, look, just focus on the positive. Stop worrying all the time. Stop worrying. Okay. However, a lot of times what I've found is that let's say somebody has a sense of feeling like a bad person or feeling guilty, even if they didn't do anything, yeah. they can feel guilty, like they did something wrong. And in which case it creates a subconscious feeling that they deserve punishment. So then the brain will say, well, this bad thing can happen. This bad thing can happen. This, Or let's say somebody uh, subconsciously is wanting more love and they have love linked up to sympathy. Well, then what do they need to have happen? For them to get love, they need to have something bad happen. So then the brain is going, well, what if this bad thing and this bad thing? So, so the mind works different than we think it is. And a lot of times we're chasing what we think, but we're not understanding the wiring of the brain. And I would say that has been a really key component in helping people to get uh, results. <laughs> so. Gotcha. And so I'm guessing in your book, you've got some details as to how folks can kind of unravel what might be going on within them personally. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. yeah, absolutely. So there's, there's prompts and questions. And then not only that, but hey, this gets miswired. And, and yeah, so, so it, gives categories and saying, Hey, this, yeah, check. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's there. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. And so then once we identify, we kind of got like, okay, I know what my issue is. I know it's connected to say neck pain. I'm just going to throw that one out there just because you have the good images of the upper neck. Then the going about releasing it in yourself, what's that last kind of step that you practice on to with the connection with the emotion and the pain? What's the practice there? With the emotion and the pain, I would say it's, it's genuinely rewiring the emotion and yeah. not just, I would say that there are a lot of misconceptions here. Also, um, a lot of times people will try to, um, Pretend like emotions aren't there when they still are. So the emotion genuinely has to be gone, rewired, seeing it from a different perspective, but genuinely feeling differently about it. And a lot of times in our culture, people will say things like this. They'll say, you know, maybe they had a hurt or a wound and they'll say, well, I forgave the person. But that doesn't make it gone. I mean, that's a lot like if I open the refrigerator and somebody opens a refrigerator, there's old, old food in the refrigerator. They say, I forgive you. And then they shut the door. Is the food gone? Well, it is not gone, but it's forgiven. And so it, but it doesn't make it gone until it's really gone. So you no longer feel that way at all. That's when it's gone. Okay. Got it. Got it. We're just wiring ourselves to think in a different direction so that we're not going to run down that pathway over and over. Yeah, we and over can't again. we can't still feel in the same way. Gotcha. Gotcha. It's really about becoming a whole different person, really, when we get down to it. You know, yes. And I mean, it depends. It really okay. depends. Okay. So I have worked with people who it's kind of like this. I have like one woman who went through my course who was bed and multiple, but one woman who went through my course who was bedridden for about eight years um, is now she's running. She's great. She'd fly anywhere. She's amazing. Um, and she even, she even just looks like a different person. I mean, she went from feeling like looking it just, she just looks alive and full of like, she just looks like radiates beauty. And it's, it's so funny to, to, to see the, the contrast of the pictures. Um, and that happens in some cases. And, and, but I would say, if somebody has a really life changing illness, then yes, I would say other times, you know, if somebody has neck pain or back pain or, you know, foot pain or whatnot, what not, yes, it changes their emotions, but they don't become a whole different person. It's just, um, yeah. So, I mean, it really, 
it really depends on how long a person has been injured and and mm -hmm. um so that's that's i mean literally i mean somebody could have anger going on anger and guilt and maybe they have anger and guilt and then they let that go and it had nothing to do with their identity and they just had anger and guilt and they let it go and they healed it and they've moved on you know I mean, if sure. you think about it with these, like with these cases, and even on my website, there's a video of a woman who was, uh, had neck pain and it took like 15 minutes to help her release her pain and it never came back. And I think that video is like eight years old oh, wow. and her pain never came back and she embodied the change. Now, is she a whole, did she change into a whole different person? Yes. And, um, mm -hmm. so well, it's part of the reason that I call this the gift method. <laughs> and the reason I call it the gift method is this, is, you know, if you think about somebody, let's say there's a woman who has been criticizing herself and she's criticizing herself and she spends the next 50 years of her life or hundred years of her life criticizing herself and what that looks like in her relationships or her work or who she becomes and how she feels about herself. But let's say this emotion has been affecting her health and she says, okay, I have to heal myself and she changes it. And now instead she feels self-love and feels self-confidence and good about herself. And what that looks like for the next 5, 10, 20, 50 years of her relationships and feeling good about herself and confident and what she does in life and, and how she feels and how much she enjoys life. I mean did so so yes it becomes pivotal i mean did she need to change her identity in that case so it so it depends on the person it depends on sure. how much it's ingrained but that's why i call it the gift method is because the way i see it is a few things first and foremost it becomes a life-changing gift but also from a spiritual level it's like um it's like if we're driving in a car and if the check engine light comes on it's telling us that there's a problem Mm -hmm. And similarly, I feel like health issues are that check engine light. It's telling us, hey, something is off in your way of feeling and thinking. There's something that's off that's causing problems in hurt or pain or something or, or holding you back in life. And as you change that, you change your life. So it becomes a life changing gift. That's huge. That is huge. I know now that a lot of people, you know, having listened to this podcast are like, okay, yes, I want to see your website. I want to look at your book. Let's share with folks how they can get a hold of you. Of course, we'll talk about Master Your Mind and Energy to Heal Your Body. Where can they find that? Give us a scoop. Absolutely. Um, my website is brandygilmore.com. And, um, and I believe there's going to be a link below yep. so they can link right to it. Uh, and so there's that. Um, my book, my book is anywhere books are sold, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. And um, and it's pretty amazing to just even seeing it. And I just want to emphasize because some that I make this look really easy. As you can tell, there's some complexities. And mm -hmm. also, it's so cool. It's so amazing <laughs> that we have, you know, we know stress affects the physical body. And when we really start to look at these patterns and the awareness of what we can do with our minds. It's just incredible. I agree. I agree. It's fascinating. I'm glad that you're sharing all of your hard work with us and just giving us a taste of what we can do with our own bodies. Gosh, Brandy, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story, your book, and all of the magical things you are doing with folks. This is impressive. Thank you so much. And Janine, thank you for what you're doing. And I love your heart and uh, you're just beautiful. So thank you so much for having me. Pleasure. Hey, fellow health junkie, thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.